How the early human evolved? Was it their diet, bipedalism, social structure, or climate changes? Let's study them and uncover how our ancestors fought against all odds and survived. Around 2.5 million years ago, marks on animal bones suggest our ancestors were scavenging meat, hinting at a crucial dietary shift. The addition of meat, rich in essential nutrients, might have provided the extra energy required for enlarging brains. Evidence from Turkana Basin indicates that by 1.9 million years ago, Homo erectus had a varied diet including aquatic resources. With the control of fire, possibly around 1 million years ago, cooking unlocked more nutrients, reducing the need for extensive gut digestion. Enzyme evidence from modern humans suggests we evolved to metabolize higher amounts of starches, pointing to roots and tubers in our ancestral diet. Archaeological sites like Swartkrans in South Africa show evidence of early barbecues where meat was charred over open flames. Chewing less meant smaller jaws, which may have indirectly impacted our vocal tract's shape, paving the way for complex speech. The rise of dairy consumption after animal domestication led to genetic adaptations in some populations to digest lactose as adults. Studies on Neanderthal dental plaques showed plant residues, revealing they too had diverse diets, not just restricted to meat. With agriculture 10,000 years ago, grains became dietary staples, but also brought challenges like tooth decay and nutritional deficiencies. Over 4 million years ago, Artipithecus ramidus took tentative steps, standing up and challenging nature's norm. The vast African savannas lay ahead, and bipedalism meant eyes could peer over tall grasses, detecting lurking dangers or distant prey. Around 3.6 million years ago, Australopithecus afarensis, like the iconic Lucy, confidently strutted, leaving her footprints in Latoli for us to discover. Those free hands, once critical for climbing, started to shape the world, turning mere stones into tools of survival. With a now upright stance, these ancestors began to see further, plan better, and venture where no four-legged beings roamed. Their body temperature found a balance in this new posture, cooled by breezes above and shielded from the harsh sun below. Walking on two, they could now carry be it food for sharing or infants for nurturing, drawing communities closer. As they walked and ran, endurance improved, making them formidable persistence hunters, wearing down faster prey over long distances. Bipedalism, a shift from all fours, wasn't just about mobility. It signaled a profound evolutionary turn, setting the stage for what was to come. Over time, this upright journey transformed the lineage, leading to us, the Homo sapiens, marveling at the stars, dreams held high. About two million years in the past, Homo habilis showcased a growing cranium, cradling a brain bustling with potential. This burgeoning brain demanded fuel, steering our diet towards richer sources including meat, accelerating evolutionary pace. Neural fireworks ignited when Homo erectus emerged, crafting sophisticated tools and harnessing the transformative power of fire. Around 700,000 years ago, as brains enlarged, so did their complexity, allowing for better problem-solving, planning, and perhaps rudimentary communication. This cognitive evolution was more than just individual brilliance. It was about connecting, sharing knowledge, and passing wisdom across generations. In the shadows of prehistoric nights, stories might have emerged, the early rhythms of language giving voice to dreams and fears. The world was vast, and these growing brains hungered for understanding, leading to the first signs of art, symbolism, and perhaps spirituality. As clans grew and mingled, the challenges of intricate social dynamics provided more fodder for the brain's relentless growth. Around 300,000 years ago, with Homo sapiens' advent, brain structure refined, accommodating advanced tools, art, and the complexities of emerging societies. Today, that evolutionary marvel sits within our skulls, an ode to a journey that started with a simple increase in size, echoing the past's whispers. As early as 500,000 years ago, sites like Terra Amata in France indicate early humans lived in organized campsites. The increased brain size of Homo erectus, around 1.9 million years ago, might hint at more complex social interactions. Around 300,000 years ago, African sites housing Homo sapiens evidence symbolic behavior, suggesting rituals and shared cultural norms. Shanidar Cave in Iraq, dated to 65,000 years ago, shows potential burial rituals among Neanderthals, indicating complex social and perhaps spiritual practices. Group hunting, evident from sites like Schöningen in Germany, showcases cooperation and strategic thinking in early human societies. Evidence from ancient beads and ornaments suggests long-distance trade networks and the importance of personal adornment in early societies. Cave paintings, like those in Chauvet, France, 
dated to around 30,000 years ago, indicate shared myths or spiritual beliefs. The growth of larger settlements like Katalhoyuk in Turkey around 9,000 years ago marks the challenges and benefits of dense social living. Artifacts like the 25,000-year-old Venus figurine spread across Europe hint at shared cultural symbols across distant tribes. Complex hierarchical societies, evident from vast city ruins like Mohenjo-Daro from the Indus Valley civilization, showcase advanced social structures around 4,500 years ago. By observing Broca's and Wernicke's areas in ancient skulls, some posit our ancestors might have had the capacity for language over 1.5 million years ago. Around 600,000 years ago, the Homo heidelbergensis's hyoid bone suggests a potential for speech, though the full extent remains debated. Symbols on artifacts like the 70,000-year-old ochre from Blombos Cave could indicate early symbolic communication a precursor to written language. Studies on modern human genetics propose a language gene, FOXP2, which underwent changes around 300,000 years ago, crucial for speech development. Neanderthal DNA also carries the FOXP2 gene variant, leading to debates on their capacity for language. Linguists theorize that proto-languages, simpler communication forms, evolved into the rich, complex languages we know today. The development of script, as seen in ancient Sumer 5,000 years ago, marked a revolutionary leap in storing and transmitting information. Language's evolution wasn't linear, it branched out, leading to the 7,000 distinct languages we have today. Shared myths, legends, and oral traditions passed down generations, showcase the critical role of language in shaping human culture. Linguistic diversities like the click languages of the sand people mirror the rich tapestry of human evolution and migration. The Pliocene epoch, around 3 million years ago, witnessed climatic fluctuations, which might have driven evolutionary changes in early hominins. Shifts from dense forests to mosaic landscapes provided new challenges and opportunities, possibly driving bipedal adaptations. The Pleistocene era, beginning 2.6 million years ago, brought repeated ice ages, altering habitats and food availability. Volcanic eruptions like the Toba super eruption 74,000 years ago might have had significant impacts on early human populations and migrations. Sea level changes resulting from glacial cycles opened and closed migration routes, evident from early human footprints on ancient coastlines. Climate-driven habitat changes potentially led to competition among species, possibly contributing to the Neanderthal's extinction. The shift to cooler, drier climates influenced dietary adaptability, pushing early humans to be more opportunistic in food choices. Ancient pollen records provide glimpses into the vegetation our ancestors might have encountered, influencing their diet and migration patterns. As the Holocene epoch started 11,700 years ago, warmer and stable climates paved the way for agriculture and sedentary societies. The ability of early humans to adapt to varied and changing environments, from tropical forests to icy tundras, stands testament to our species' resilience. The longer development period in Homo sapiens allows for significant brain growth and learning after birth. Fossil records like the juvenile Homo erectus skull from Nariokotomi suggest prolonged childhoods existed at least 1.5 million years ago. An extended childhood means longer dependency, potentially strengthening family or group bonds crucial for survival. The prolonged learning phase allowed the transmission of cultural, social, and survival knowledge across generations. With longer childhoods, social play became an essential aspect of development, shaping social skills and cognitive abilities. The unique human life stages, including adolescence, might have evolved to facilitate complex social learning and integration. This slow pace of growth and extended youth might have been key in fostering the advanced cognitive abilities we now possess. A trade-off exists. While longer development means increased vulnerability, it also allows for the acquisition of complex skills and knowledge. The nurturing of young ones required cooperative efforts, potentially leading to stronger community ties and shared responsibilities. Today's modern societies with structured educational systems mirror this evolutionary trend, emphasizing the importance of extended learning. Around 10,000 years ago, the Neolithic Revolution marked a shift from hunter-gatherer lifestyles to agriculture. In the Fertile Crescent, wild wheat and barley underwent domestication, transforming societies and diets. Ancient domestication wasn't just about food. Flax was cultivated for fibers, evident from 9,000-year-old textiles found in Katalhoyuk. In ancient China, rice cultivation around 8,000 years ago led to stable settlements, advanced pottery, and societal growth. The domestication of animals like goats in Zagros Mountains 10,000 years ago provided not just meat but milk, wool, and labor. 
Ancient dog burials, like the 14,000-year-old Bon Oberkassel site, show early bonds between humans and their domesticated companions. With stable food sources, populations grew, leading to villages, trade, and the dawn of civilization. However, settled agricultural life wasn't without challenges. Disease spread easier, and hierarchies emerged. The mastery over plants and animals signified not just an evolutionary step, but a profound relationship between humans and nature. Today's vast agricultural landscapes, from wheat fields to dairy farms, echo this transformative bond forged millennia ago. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.